Mr. How many, do we have any veterans in the room? We do? Okay, well let me start by thanking you for your service. You know, today is Veterans Day, and I'd like to ask you if y'all would do me a favor today. Uh, I spent 34 years in the military uniform. I served both in the Navy and in the Air Force. Went to war on a couple of different occasions. And I like to tell people that the real thank that I got for being able to do that was to wear the uniform of the United States of America. So if you would do me a favor on this Veterans Day, if you stop somebody and tell them you saw a guy, 65 years old, spent more than half of his life in the military, I want to say thanks. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to wear the uniform of the United States of America. For me, that's an honor and a privilege. So we pause to say thanks so to the vet. What's your name? Kelvin Powers. Kelvin, uh, thank you for your service. And I know it was an honor for you as well to serve our country. Thank you. Uh, well, some of you, some of you I've seen before. And so I got to try, I don't have to I use my old jokes or anything like that. Uh, let, me, let me start by taking a survey. How about that? This is an informal survey I've taken to many groups, to many groups large groups, small groups, church groups, school groups, etc. And I'm going to take it with this group and see uh, if my results are consistent. So here's what I want you to do. If you like being around negative people, would you please raise your hand? Okay. I'm betting almost a thousand. I had one, I was at Baptist Brotherhood group a few years ago and I asked that question. Somebody in the back said, God said, loves, we should love everybody. <laughs> so I grant him his argument. But for the most part, most people don't like being around negative people. And I say, if you want to be a leader, the number one attribute that you bring to any circumstance would be your attitude. And I will tell you that a positive attitude goes a much longer way than an attitude that's not inspiring people with positive energy. So. I'm batting almost a thousand on that question. Now here's my conclusion from that. If you don't like being around negative people, then you're not going to ruin somebody else's day by being negative. Does that make sense to you? Now I want to see you shaking your head. <laughs> mm, there's a little commitment here. Okay, well, I'm batting almost a thousand on that, and I will continue to do it, and I think the conclusion is really the right conclusion. I'm going to uh, pass out some note-taking devices here. You guys take some notes. Well, let me let me officially start by thanking you for the opportunity to be back on the campus to see us one more time. Every time I come out here, I leave inspired by the interaction I have with the students the direction I see the faculty taking, and the vision that your leadership demonstrates every time I have a chance to interact with them. So I always thank the class. I think the last class I was in, the first class was in the International Business Class. I, th I thank you guys at the end. I want to thank you at the front now because it's really becoming a really inspiring experience for me to come out here and spend some time with you. As you know, I'm part of the Executive and Residence Program, and one of the major aims of that program is, I think there are about 10 of us in there, uh, for us to come and spend and share with you some real-world experience on some things that you may be studying here at CSU. So Dr. Gertis has asked me this morning to come and talk about communication, professional presentations and communications. Now, for those of you who will evolve to leadership position, I'll just say that good, effective communicating skills is what I call a universal leadership attribute. If you are a good communicator, you will be an effective leader. And I think good communicating skills really separate good leaders from great leaders. So I see that as being universal. So the time you invest in learning good communication skills is a very, very good one. Now, as an Air Force officer, as I mentioned, I spent 30 years in the Air Force. We build into professional development the ability to communicate better and better. We have three levels of professional military education. The first level, squadron officer school, you go back as a captain, and you learn how to give briefings. You learn how to put together a briefing. You learn how to stand in the front of an audience and be able to get your points across. The second level, or intermediate level, is called Air Command and Staff College. There the focus is on writing. You have a major research project, you write that, you have a paper for that project, the school actually publishes it, it's like in a little book, publish it, and it's in the library at Air University forever. So the focus at the intermediate level is being able to write well. The final level, the senior level, is at the War College level. I went to the National War College in Washington, D.C. And there they put the two things together. We wrote about 10, 10 papers, and all of our exams were oral exams. You had to sit in front of a panel of instructors 
uh, faculty members and present your arguments and be able to support it. So for me, I grew up with professional development focused on creating good, effective leaders. And so what I'd like to do this morning is to share with you some of those experiences and then give you a couple of uh, hints or tips. So as you prepare for your big presentation next month for your project in this class, at least you'll have something hopefully that will be helpful in allowing you to do that. So does that work for everybody? And I'm going to talk just for a little period of time, and then I'll give you a chance to ask questions and answers. Uh, like I said in the other classes, I've been all over the world. I've got three college degrees, two of them are masters. I can talk just about anything. So if you've got a question on your mind on anything, don't be afraid to ask. I'll try to address it. So, but this morning, we're going to try to focus on, on communication. And as I talk about communication, as I, as I got prepared to come to this class, I found there's a whole bunch of things I can talk about. But I want to narrow it down to three major areas. I've given you an outline. I, for you to take notes on it, I'm going to cover those basic three areas. Preparation, content, and then delivery. The first challenge always is being prepared. And I think this is the one where you try to make the greatest impression in the shortest amount of time. That's really an effective oral communication. You try to make the best impression in the shortest amount of time. The best way to do that is to be prepared. And here are some things that I found to be helpful and trying to be prepared in order to put together a professional presentation. The first one is analyze your audience. And you know, I'm, I'm not saying make a big scientific study on analyzing your audience, but you want to know who you're going to be speaking with. Are they your peers? Are they your superiors? Your boss? Classmate? Teacher? Who are you going to be speaking to? And then are you going to be speaking to a lot of people or only a small amount of people? The reason uh, analyzing your audience becomes important is it allows you to decide on what is the language you will use, and what is the tone that you will use. You know, if you're talking to a uh, group of peers, and it's something that you're experiencing, you're a football player, you're talking to a group of football players, I think the tone and language would be a little bit different as opposed if you're talking to the good doctor in the back, uh, back of the room back there. So analyzing the audience, I think, is the first major thing in putting together a professional presentation. Going hand in hand with analyzing your audience is deciding well, what is the purpose. What is the purpose of your presentation? Is it to inform? Is it to persuade? Is it to inspire? And you can see from each one of those purposes, you will have a different set of language, a different tone that you would use. So when you marry analyzing your audience with deciding what the purpose is going to be, I think it starts setting you up in the right mindset to make sure your presentation is going to be professional. The third thing that I think is important in the preparation stage is know what you're talking about. Know what you're talking about. I know you've been doing a lot of research. This is where your research comes to fore. You know, you can figure out what you're going to say from the research you've done. You can figure out what you want to say from the experiences that you've had. And you can figure out from what you want to say from your expertise. You know, some of us have particular gifts and skills and certifications and all like this. But know what you're talking about. I think in the preparation stage, stage these are the three most important things. Analyze your audience to whom you will be speaking. Understand what is the purpose of your presentation and then to know what you're talking about. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Pretty straightforward. And you'll see me mention here a couple of times about simplicity and being concise. I mean, we make communication very, very difficult. You know, I, used to, I went to college too, and I remember there were those of us who thought the way to impress the professor is to have big words, big long sentences, and I've, I've spoken to groups, I've spoken to a person as high as the Vice President of the United States. I've given presentations to the Vice President of the United States, Secretary of Defense, all the way down the line. And the lesson I learned is the simple of that. You know why that's, in, that's important? Because that person is probably going to have 15 or 20 people coming in the day telling them things. And the, the more simple it is, the better for them to understand. So those are the, uh, the three things in terms of getting prepared. And then just like anything else, this, these three, three things that I've outlined for you here, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. In communication, that's absolutely a perfect rule of thumb. The more you practice, the better you will be. So practice analyzing an audience. Practice one-on-one -on -one communications. Well, why, who am I speaking with? What's this person's background? Practice. Practice figuring out what is the purpose that you want to cover. So practice, practice, practice. Now, after figuring out who the audience is and what is the purpose of the presentation, and then gathering information that you need to present, the next step is working on the content. This is the most daunting part of your communications challenge. The reason being is that you have to now decide what it is your audience needs to know. Notice I didn't say not how much you know. 
what your audience needs to know. When you do a paper, you know, you put a whole bunch of facts and figures in a paper. In a verbal communications, oral communication, you're limited on time and you're limited on the attention span of your limited by the attention span of your audience. So your first challenge is figuring out, after all this research I've done, all the things I've done for a semester, what can I eliminate and what do I need to cover? And the things that you need to cover should be your key main points. How, did you, how do you decide what are your key main points? Now I mentioned to you that I went through the Air Force professional development regime. We were taught to think in terms of three. We're going to make three main points. Normally they're covered by three subs, but that's what we were taught. I'm not going to tell you how many main points you need to make. The thing that I would offer, though, is you need to go through the exercise and figure out what it is your audience needs to know, and then you focus on those as your key, uh, key point. Now, here's some tips in terms of focusing on tackling this challenge in terms of content. First thing I think is you need to start with an outline. You know, a simple outline, simple, simple outline. And for me, a simple outline has these parts. Uh, first of all, it has an introduction. In the introduction, you establish your credibility. You know, I told you earlier, I went through the three stages of military, professional military education, to sort of create some credibility that I know something about communicating. So you establish your credibility in your introduction. The other thing in the introduction is you tell the people what you're going to cover. I said, I'm going to cover three things, preparation, content, and delivery. You tell them in the introduction. The second important thing in a simple uh, outline is your main points. What are the main points that you want to cover? You list those main points, transition from one to the other. Third thing in that simple outline would be a summary. And a summary simply recaps or synthesizes your main points into that nice, smooth statement uh, that you want to leave with your audience. And that brings you to the last part, which is the conclusion. What is the big thing you want to leave with your audience? That would be your conclusion. So as you tackle this thing about how do I put together a content that's going to be professional and a content that's going to allow me to get across the points I, I, I want to get, uh, my first recommendation is to start with an outline, a very simple outline, just to give you something to get you in the ballpark. The second thing is, as you put together your outline and your main points, I would recommend that you organize with a pattern. You know, there are some things that automatically lend themselves to a certain pattern, there's a certain sequence, you know, but I like to always think about the pattern. I want to go from general to specific. I want to go from old to new. I want to go from right to left. Organize your key points with some sort of a pattern is what I would, would recommend. And then, you'll hear me say this again, and I've already mentioned it already, and that is keep it simple. Keep it simple and concrete. You know, if you're going to be informing somebody, you can use examples. If you want to convince somebody, you can use statistics. If you want to inspire, you can use comparisons. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Big words, uh, I guess they count somewhere, but in the real world, that's not been my experience. You know, I spent two and a half years in the Pentagon. I never, never seen a presentation that lasted longer than 15 minutes. I never saw a letter from the president, secretary, that was more than one page long. Never. Never. Keep it simple. But the task is, what do you put in the content? What are those key main things that you want, you want to get across? And then, as I mentioned before, practice, practice, practice. Practice doing all of these things, and I will guarantee you, this is one thing, there are a couple of things I can almost guarantee in organizational professional development. First one, I can guarantee that if you want to improve your self-confidence, you first decide what's your best attribute, what's the thing you're best at than anything else. And then you seek opportunities to put that on display. The more times you put your best on display, the more times you'll be successful. The more times you're successful, your self-confidence will continue to grow. I guarantee you that. I'll tell you, I just guarantee you that. The other thing that I will guarantee you is that you can get very good at communicating with other people. And the way that you do that is to practice, practice, practice. Now here's the last major point I think that's important to put together a professional presentation. And that is the delivery. You gotta give it. You gotta stand up in front of a group of people and give it. Now, I wanna start, instead of saying practice, practice, practice at the end, I'm gonna start the delivery by practice, practice, practice. I practice my delivery in a mirror. You know, in today's environment, you can probably take yourself, do a video on your iPhone or something like that. But it gives you a chance to look back at yourself and see some of these things that you may think you're taking for granted, but maybe sending off a message that you don't want to give. So practice, practice, practice. I practice in the front of the mirror. The other thing I will tell you in terms of confidence building is look your best. Look your best for two reasons. First of all, 
You walk into to an audience, into a room, and you're going to give a presentation. If you look your best, it gives you some credibility with the people you're going to be talking to. Or talking with. The second thing about looking your best, and this is what I should tell my young officers, is that if you feel that you look your best, it's going to increase your sense of confidence. You know, I used to tell my young officers, you dust in the morning, you want to make sure you got a haircut, make sure you got shoe shine, your uniform is pressed, etc. When you start off feeling good about yourself, the self the self confidence you need to get through a good presentation uh, will will start. So look your best. The second thing is scout the venue. You know, I came in this room. The first thing I did, I looked around. Did you have a podium? How close are we going to be? Do I have to move anything around? You know, scout the venue. If you get a chance to practice where you're going to give your presentation beforehand, my advice would be is to take it. Is to take the opportunity to talk where you're going to actually be giving the presentation. What support do you need? Who's responsible for making sure that the computer is there, projector is there, you got a mic if you need it? Who's responsible for all of that? And make sure you're comfortable with who's responsible for that. You know why? Because you always need to have a contingency plan. You know the old Murphy's Law, anything that will go wrong will go wrong? I used to go all over the world taking presentations to companies, trying to get those companies to come to South Carolina and bring business here. I always had my presentation loaded on my iPad, I had it on a thumb drive, and I had some hard copy pages. You know, because if really push came to shove, I can sit down and do a tabletop with my hand held. And you know, you travel, I go to Germany, I don't know what their setup is there, and I got an idea. But I want to make sure that I can give a good original soul. Think about a contingency. And the best way to do that is understanding the support that you need and the support that you're going to get when you get there. That's the other thing I want to show up early. How many people in here get nervous when you have to stand up and talk in front of people? Raise your hand. Most of us do. I do too. I get nervous before I start talking to you. So what do you have to do? I say show up early. Bring your confidence with you. By showing up early, you know you get at ease. You can look and get a, lay out, a look at the room. Look at the type of people who are going to be coming in. Look for familiar faces. All that sort of time. You know, you know, I used to go to the, to the doctor for my annual evaluations. And before they take your blood pressure, they tell you show up early, sit down, relax, then we'll take your blood pressure. Well, I use that in, in, in thinking when I'm going to go give a presentation. I show up early. I was here at 10.30 this morning. And I just want to get the feel. You know, I want to make sure I look. If I put in place my contingency plan, do I have the, you know, what adjustments I have to make? Show up early with your confidence, and I think that will, uh, will help you handle some of those nerve things. Here's another tip I'll give you in terms of getting rid of that initial nervousness. Here's a tip I will give you, a tip I use all the time. And that is, my first 10 or 15 seconds of what I want to say, I memorize. I have it down pat. Because you know what happens? What happens? You, you bleed off that energy. That, that nervous energy kind of bleeds off. And once you get it off, then you're ready to go. So the tip I would tell you in terms of nervousness is know what that first point's going to be. Have it down pat so you get off to a good start. Uh, I mentioned this by talking about keeping things simple, but keep it concise. If you're going to cover three main points, cover your three main points and get off the stage. If it's five or 15, whatever, keep it concise. You know, I told you we used to brief uh, Secretary of Defense every morning. I was in the Pentagon. He would get like 10 or 15 briefings from different people. He had to then soak all that in and then go brief the president. So I'm the logistics guy. If I get up with a long dissertation, it comes the intel guy, the long dissertation. It comes the operation guy. He's not going to remember. So you kept it simple. You covered your main points and you got away. I think that's true in any presentation that you want to make. Here's another one. Be aware of your nonverbal communications. You know, do you do this? It depends on the audience. Do you do this? Uh, do you have that old coin in the pocket, you know, that nervous energy you're trying to get rid of? Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Huh? Be aware of your non -verbals. And this is where uh, practicing a mirror comes into play. And this is if, you know, like, I'm, you guys can do this because you guys are very tech savvy. If you want to video yourself, look at yourself. Look for those non -verbals. Look for when you take off your glasses. What does that do to your audience? Does it break the concentration? Sometimes you do things on purpose. You know, once you get good at it, you can use your non -verbals on purpose. You know, for example, uh, one nonverbal in our culture, and you remember this, I'm in your space, right? If I wanted you to get the point, I can use that, right? No offense. You use your nonverbals to your, to your advantage. There are some things, there are some nonverbals that's part of your normal pattern. The normal way that you talk, some people talk using their hands a lot. Some things are non, some nonverbals are part of your normal way of communicating. Make sure you understand them, then use them to your best advantage. Uh, the last thing I would offer is on visual aids. Don't let the visual aids become the show. Okay? You know, nowadays with PowerPoint, we can do all kinds of things with PowerPoint and animation and all like this. 
The main reason you're up there to speak to someone is to get your points across. Get them to understand the points, the key points that you're trying to make, and so that when you're finished, they get something out of your presentation, not the visual aids. I gave up these, uh, these note-taking devices. This, this is my visual aid for today. A visual aid is supposed to aid you in the presentation of your key points. It should aid you in the presentation of your key points. That's what a visual aid is supposed to do. So, of all the other areas, here's one. I started with practice, practice, practice. I'll end with practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the better you will be. Now, you know, I've told you how professional presentations have been part of my professional development throughout my Air Force career. I think there are three major areas that it's important to do that. You must be prepared. You must take your time and craft the right content. And then you must be able to deliver in a very confident, controlled, non-nervous fashion. Those are the three areas that's important. And if you do those things, if you do those things, I guarantee you, you will get better and better at making verbal presentations and communicating in an effective way. I almost guarantee you that. So as you step to uh, your presentations next week, I would hope that you would take a couple of these tips and help craft a presentation that will allow you to achieve your objective. Now, when you give your presentation, I don't know what the objective is. Is the objective going to be to get an A, convince the professor, make a stand, you know, solve world hunger, whatever your objective is. But I hopefully some of these tips will be of value to you that you can use to help me. <coughs> now, I mentioned I was going to talk, and I said about 20, 25 minutes. My 25 minutes is up. <laughs>